What is going on, guys? Welcome to the N1 Fitness Podcast. I am your host, Marcus Sadu, and today we're chatting about healthy body weight, ideal body weight. So I get this question all the time from clients and folks just reaching out asking me, what is a healthy body weight for me? What do you think I should weigh? And the answer to that question isn't just a straight up, well, you're this tall and so you should weigh this much. There are more factors to take into account when determining the right body weight for you or body composition for you as an individual versus some random average or equation. So I am going to explain exactly how to figure out what a good sustainable settling spot is for you as an individual. So let's say you're thinking you want to drop 20 pounds, okay, but you're wondering whether possibly you need to lose more, maybe a bit less, you're just not sure. Either way, I'd recommend that you get started ASAP. Get started right away. Get the ball rolling in the right direction with your nutrition, movement, sleep, and stress management, and have that 20 pound goal. Just keep in mind that it is a flexible moving target at this point, just because who knows, you might lose 15 pounds and be stoked and decide to maintain that 15 pound weight loss, or you might lose say 20 pounds and figure out that you wanna lose 10 more. Either way, don't get stuck in the analysis paralysis stage. Get started, begin moving forward towards your goal. You can think about it like going on a week long road trip. You know the rough area that you'd like to end up in seven days time, but you don't need to decide on a super specific spot just yet, right? Because you're just getting started, you're still a full week out, you might stumble across some cool little town or take a detour here and there. Again, your timeline and your ultimate destination is somewhat flexible. You know roughly where you're going, it's just not exact at this point in your journey. Now, as a little aside, in my experience, folks tend to underestimate how much weight that they'd ultimately like to lose. So for example, if someone wants to lose 20 pounds, that digit typically ends up being 1.5x or 2x. So ultimately it ends up being closer to say 30 or 40 pounds. Not in all cases by any means, but more times than not, we just tend to underestimate how much body fat we're actually carrying. And so the take home point here is, give yourself 1.5 times, but ideally twice as much time as you think you're going to need to get to your goal, just because A, there's no harm in getting there early, and B, it gives you more flexibility because life happens, right? A vacation might pop up, birthdays, weekends away, you know, holidays, you might just fall off track for a day or two or maybe even a weekend. Stuff pops up, right? So giving yourself extra time takes the pressure off a little bit and gives you a little bit more wiggle room. Now, the closer you get to your goal, the more nuanced this quote unquote ideal body weight is going to be. Why? Because the three main measures we want to use are how you're looking, feeling, and performing. So you can think about these three categories like a triangle, okay? So on one corner, you've got how you're looking, on one corner, you've got how you're feeling, and the last corner, you've got how you're performing. And then smack dab in the middle of the triangle is lifestyle because Lifestyle is the intersection of all of these measures. It's essentially the glue that holds everything together because if you can't maintain the lifestyle piece long term, how you're looking, feeling, and performing is all going to fall apart because we are after sustainability here, right? Now let's run through the natural progression of this, okay? So when you start, you're not stoked on how you're looking, feeling, or performing, and that is exactly why you are creating change. So as all three of these aspects shift for the better as a result of improved nutrition, movement, sleep, and stress management strategies, as well as how you weave everything into a sustainable lifestyle that works for you personally, there are trade-offs to be made. For example, You're probably spending more time grocery shopping and cooking than you were prior, so you're investing more time in on that end. However, you're simultaneously reaping the rewards of better eating habits, i.e. weight loss, increased energy, better mood, etc. And you're probably also saving a bunch of money because cooking most of your own meals is a massive cash saver. You're also likely investing more time into movement and quality sleep. So hitting your 10,000 steps per day, making sure that you're getting seven to nine hours of sleep per night, that also might mean 
that you've got a little bit less time for things like Netflix. But again, trade-offs. Alcohol is another one. You've probably reduced your alcohol intake at least somewhat over the course of the fat loss process. Maybe not. It depends how much you were drinking to begin with and what your goals are. But most folks are more mindful of how much booze they're taking in just because it's super calorie dense and it is seriously weaved into the culture or the fabric of our culture rather. So at some point, you're going to have made so much progress that the trade-offs for additional results are not going to be worth the payoff, okay? So what's a specific example of this? Say you're down 15 pounds and you'd like to lose an additional five pounds, but the nutrition or movement trade-offs that you'd need to implement in order to lose that additional five pounds isn't worth it from a lifestyle standpoint for you. So it might mean that you'd need to bump up your steps from 10,000 per day to 12,000. You might need to reduce your calorie intake by say 100 calories per day and consume two fewer drinks per week. But maybe that five pounds isn't worth those behavior change trade-offs for you personally, but maintaining the 15 pound loss is entirely doable and sustainable for you within a lifestyle context. Congrats, you have reached your ideal body weight. This is the center of the triangle. Now, because everyone has different goals, priorities, preferences, and just varies in how they want to live their day-to-day lives, a quote-unquote ideal body weight is going to be different for everyone. And I'm not talking about ideal in a purely physical sense, but more so a pragmatic sense and a realistic sense. Because if you're not willing to make those trade-offs that are necessary to reach a quote-unquote ideal body weight, well then what use is that to you? So that's why I like this model because it takes everything into account based on what you're willing to do, what you want, and balances the trade-offs in your life and really takes into account what sort of lifestyle that you'd like to lead as an individual. For example, if making those additional trade-offs for that last five pounds just makes you miserable because you really value those two additional drinks per week and you'd rather spend that time with your family instead of getting that extra 2,000 steps in per day and then also that calorie shift means one less meal out with a friend per week, I'd argue that that's not actually ideal or healthy for you as an individual. It might work for someone else, but as soon as you tip that scale in an unfavorable direction where one area is taking too much from another in your reality or your sense, then you've gone too far. So again, it's all about developing a happy medium between how you're looking, feeling, and performing within a lifestyle context and making it work for you. And the truth is, is that no one can answer that ideal body weight question other than you, because you know how you'd like to live on a daily basis and what your priorities are. Also, your ideal body weight will likely change throughout your life just because your priorities shift throughout your life, right? Having kids is a classic example. Most folks' body composition takes a bit of a hit when they first have kids because all of a sudden there's a little life around that takes absolute priority and therefore the parents come second. Or maybe there are times and instances when it's not a kid, but it's a career, right? If you're articling as a lawyer, for example, and working 60, 70, 80 hours per week, maybe your health is going to take a bit of a back seat for that period of time. And you're just gonna do the best you can given the circumstance. So again, it's a moving target based on what you've got going on in your life and what you're prioritizing at that time. I'll use myself as an example. When I started my business eight and a half years ago, My health took a bit of a hit just because I was working so much. But I had that goal and that was a trade-off that I was willing to make to advance my career at that point in time. Another example is for the last two years, I've been digital nomading around the world. And so I've given up comforts of living in one place and being close to my family and most of my friends. But travel, I love. So I'm willing to make those trade-offs at this point in my life. No judgment, just choices. The truth is we can have anything that we want. We just can't have everything that we want. So it all comes down to priorities. And as you get closer to your ideal body weight for you, that settling spot that you'd like to hang out simply comes down to managing priorities. 
And if you're struggling to understand what your priorities actually are, just look at your actions because they will always let you know where you stand on a priority basis. You spend your time exactly how you'd like to spend it. You spend your money exactly how you'd like to spend it. You eat exactly what you want to eat and you drink exactly what you want to drink. Now, someone may say, well, I'm not eating what I want to eat right now because my goal is weight loss and I want to eat burgers and pizza, but I'm actually eating salmon, rice, and veggies. Well, if you're eating salmon, rice, and veggies, you want to be eating salmon, rice, and veggies because clearly fat loss is more of a priority right now than burgers and pizza are. It's not that you can't eat burgers or pizza. It's just that you know that eating a whole bunch of calorie dense fast food isn't going to get you the weight loss result that you're after and therefore you're eating more healthfully. This is actually a bit of a pet peeve of mine because some folks act like they're doing something that they don't want to do when in fact they're doing exactly what they want to do. They position it like they don't want to be eating healthfully but they want the result that comes from eating healthfully, which just makes no sense. So it's sort of like saying, I don't wanna go to work, but I do it because I need to make money. Well, you do want to go to work because you do want to make money, right? If you didn't wanna go, you wouldn't, but clearly financial security is more of a priority than not showing up to your job. So you want that more, and therefore you're doing exactly what you want to do. Anyways, I'll get off my soapbox now, but the whole woe is me perspective really gets me riled up, grinds my gears a little bit, but take homes, okay? Establish a sustainable spot for you on the looking, feeling, and performing front within a lifestyle context that you can sustain long-term and you cannot go wrong. Whatever that body weight is, is a healthful or ideal body weight for you because you're the only one that can differentiate and determine what your priorities truly are. If you're interested in personalized one-on-one nutritional coaching and or workout design with me, you can head on over to n1fitness.com forward slash coaching or click the link in the description below. Be sure to subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on. Follow me up on Instagram at n1fitness and friend me on Facebook at Marcus Sidhu. Thanks so much for listening, guys. I hope you found this helpful and I will catch you on the next episode. See ya.